Yeah, this is good. What's up? Now you're exposed correctly. Um, do I just start? Good evening. Good evening. We have breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> what if we like start off with like bloopers like, good evening. Boop. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> is it super dry air in here? Is, is your nose bleeding? Uh, it, it was bloody. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just turn your phone upside down? Because if I see the light go off, it would... Distracting. Yeah. What's up, YouTube? I don't like saying what's up, YouTube. <laughs> The hardest part about these videos is the introduction. So I was like, what What do I refer to you as? We say, what's up, YouTube? Or I'm like, hi, guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you're new here, nice to meet you. Either way, um, the introduction is always the hardest part. But I'm glad that you're here. If you're new here, I'm not going to tell you to subscribe just yet because maybe you don't even like what I have to say. So watch the video if you're interested. And if you end up liking it, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel the bell to get notified, and now, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, from the very beginning, I'm in a completely dark room with a black screen behind me and this wicked light, bright light in my face. Rico's behind the camera, and uh, it's a little bit, a little bit odd, but I feel good about it. This video came about because I've been asked a lot, a lot of times, how did I get the job of coaching Gary Vaynerchuk? If you don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, uh, what I'd like you to do is go to www.google.com, G-O-O-G-L-E.com, and just Google Gary Vaynerchuk. If you are watching this, odds are you already know who he is. Tremendous, tremendous, I'm going to say tremendous person first, and then entrepreneur second. I really, I think Gary is one of the people who online, people don't really understand. A lot of people think, is he really that way? Is it just for the camera? Uh, is he uh, actually the person that he makes people think that he is? And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, coaching him every day, literally seven days a week for the better part of three years, he is the same exact person that he puts on camera. It's not a joke. It's, uh, and by the, what, I, what I mean by that is he's, even more nice, more empathetic, more understanding, more caring. And I'm saying this, he doesn't know I'm filming this video. I'm saying this because I think a lot of people will have questions about Gary after watching it. People like always want to know, well, what is he actually like? And I sort of want to just preemptively say that I don't even know if I would be where I am. And let me restate that. I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for Gary. Uh, it doesn't take away from the work that I've put in and, and the effort I've put into my business and all the things that I've done without him. Uh, and you, as you'll hear in this full story, because I'm going to go back into really like the full story of how I got this job, which dates back to 2011. Gary hasn't been with me the whole way. Right? I started back in 2011. I started working with Gary in 2016. So a lot happened prior to me getting this job and, and working with Gary. But it's important for me to give credit where it's due. And I think more than anything, since I started working with Gary, I've had really, really big mental and emotional changes into how I perceive things, into how I perceive the world, into how I am um, affected by the way people treat me, into how I treat other people, and it's all impacted my business and my life in many ways. So I just wanted to give a thank you to Gary on that front. And just to let you know, if you ever had any doubt about him, he is who he says he is, and like, that's the truth. So, with that being said, how did I get the job of coaching Gary Vaynerchuk? It starts, it dates back to 2011. And I'll start by saying, I got my first personal training job when I was 14 years old, which was pre-2011. That was like 2000, I don't even know what year was that. I was like, two, I don't even know what year that was. I was born in 1991. So, in 2011 is when I started my website, SciFitness.com. I started my fitness website, and I started it not because I thought that I was going to make a business out of it. And it's really important to understand that, especially for any coaches watching. 
when I started my website, online coaching wasn't really a thing at that time. I didn't start my website in order to become an online coach. I started my website because I was looking at people who I really um, modeled as mentors and as people that I looked up to in the industry, like Eric Cressy and uh, Dan John, Pavel Tsatsouline, Lyle McDonald, Martin Burke and Alan Aragon, all these people who I really looked up to. And at that point in time, blogs and articles were the thing, especially for the area of the science-based end of the fitness industry. Instagram wasn't a thing yet. Um, so what I started doing was I made a website and I wrote articles. At that point in time, I, I had been training at Westside Barbell. I ended up interning with Eric Cressy at his gym. And all I was doing was just writing articles. I don't know why I wrote like this. I was writing articles and with the sole purpose of teaching people what I was learning teaching people what I did, uh, teaching people how I was lifting, how I was coaching people, how I was structuring nutrition programs, and I just wrote a lot, like at least, at least, at least one article a week every week for the better part of three years. And I wanna say it was at least one, usually more. And when I say an article, a lot of people might hear an article and they think, oh, that takes 45 minutes to write or a couple hours to write. One article would take anywhere between like 12 to 20 hours plus of work in terms of coming up with the article idea and then researching it, gathering all the information, writing all of it out, editing it over and over and over. So one article was, it was a lot of work and it was very long form, not like more Instagram now, which is like relatively short form. Relatively, it, it still takes me a while to make an Instagram post, but a longer Instagram post might be two to three hours to make, whereas a longer article would be up to a week or plus to write. So I would do this at least once a week, every week from 2011 onward. And what happened was, and it's crazy to think about, but what happened was when I would get people commenting on my articles or anything, which but when I first started it was very rare, like very rarely would people comment or, or read my articles, especially at the beginning. It was like, I remember the first several months, I got like 20 views a day on my website, 10 of which were probably my mom, uh, the rest of which were myself or maybe some random friend of mine who I said, go read this. But it was very few. And over time, more and more people started to read it and, and have questions. The way that this connects to Gary is that in 2012, there was one person who commented on an article of mine. And I didn't know who he was. I didn't know where he lived. I didn't know... I had never met him in person. I never thought I would meet him in person. It was just another person who happened to leave a comment. And I was always responding to comments. I would always respond to comments. Uh, and so at this point in time, I didn't think this was anything or anyone special or different. They had a question posted on one of my articles and I responded. And that same person commented at least a couple of times on different articles of mine and I always responded just like I did to everybody. It turns out that the person who commented on these articles and who received that response through a crazy chain of events, ended up becoming Gary Vaynerchuk's personal trainer before me, Mike Vacanti. He's now one of my best friends in the world. An incredible coach, extraordinary person, very smart, very kind, uh, very compassionate, and really I've, I've all good things to say about Mike. He's incredible. If you don't follow Mike, definitely do. Um, but at this point in time, in 2012, after having written a lot of articles and, and continuing to, um, he was living in the Midwest. I believe he was working as an accountant at that time. He was reading a bunch of different people's articles, mine, JC Dean's, Eric Cressy's a lot. He commented one of mine. And then what happened with him is he ended up getting into personal training. And he ended up getting an internship with our friend who was living in New York. That friend of ours, John Romanello, was coaching Gary at that time. And then when John ended up moving to LA, Mike started coaching Gary through that connection. He had a, Mike had a two-year deal with Gary, and when his two-year deal was up, Gary offered for him to stay on again, and Mike was like, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and like sort of do my own thing, and Mike, Gary was like, okay, well, who's gonna be my coach? And so through an interview process, I was recommended as an option to coach Gary. I was living in Israel at the time, so what happened is, I started my website in 2011 when I was in college. When I graduated college, I had built a business. 
I had built an online coaching business. Again, when I first started, I didn't know that I was starting a business. I had no idea. It wasn't like in my mind is I want to make money from this. It was just I want to help people. Over time, people started saying, could you coach me? Could you write my programs? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I would do it for free. I didn't, I didn't know paypal.com was a thing. I didn't know I could make money from it. Just like, yeah, give me, like, I'll write your programs. And then more and more people started to come on and it, eventually it had to. I had to charge for it because I was spending more time writing programs and coaching people than I was actually studying and doing schoolwork. So fast forward, I get out of college and I end up after some time moving to Israel. So I was living in Tel Aviv. It was just awesome. I had like a, an apartment right around the corner from, from the beach in Tel Aviv. It was amazing. And I'm selected as one of the possible candidates to coach Gary, mainly because Mike knew who I was. Mike trusted me only because I responded to his comments on my website all the way back in 2012. And because of that, he'd always remembered me. He'd always knew that I not only just remembered me for doing that, but knew that I had really good quality content and knew that I knew what I was doing as a coach. So now fast forward to the 2000, uh, 15, 2016, I'm in Israel. Mike says, hey, listen, um, we would love it if you uh, coach Gary, if you would love to, to apply to coach Gary. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, that'd be awesome. Like, absolutely. And I remember Mike, I'll never forget this. I was living in Tel Aviv and Mike is like, okay, so you've got to come and, and coach Gary for an hour. You got to sort of interview with him. And I was like, great. This was in February of 2000. 16, I believe. Yeah, February 2016. And um, I was like, great, let's do it in June because I've got to come back for a wedding anyway. And Mike was like, no, no, no. It's got to be this week. And I was like, Mike, my mom is coming to Israel for her first time ever. I got her a trip to Israel and I got to meet her here. And uh, that's next week. And sometimes it's very hard to leave Israel and then come back and with the whole visa situation, they might not have let me back in. I was like, I, I can't, I have to wait until at least until after she's gone because I don't want to have trouble getting back into the country and then have my mom be like, where are you? And he was like, yeah, I get it, I get it. Uh, if you want the job, you got to come this week. And I was like, okay. So I didn't tell my roommate, I didn't tell my mom, I didn't tell anybody. I bought a ticket, flew from Tel Aviv to New York, stayed at Mike's apartment for 24 hours, coached Gary, flew back to Tel Aviv, all within about a day. Fortunately, I got back into Israel, met my mom. It was great, fantastic trip, one of the best experiences of my life. Um, and then, so this is in, in February, leading into March. And Mike was like, cool, I'll let you know, I'll let you know uh, within a month. So a month goes by, nothing, no call, no anything. I was like, okay, I'll wait a little bit more. I don't want to bother him. But I thought like maybe I just didn't get the job. And I'm starting to get a little bit more nervous, like get anxious. The whole point leading up to that month, I didn't think about it much, but as the date got closer, I was like, did I get it? Did I get it? Did I get it? So now in my head, I'm like, I just didn't get it. He didn't get back to me. So I write Mike a Facebook message. I was like, hey Mike, I'm sure you're working busy, just wondering what's going on with that. He gets back to me. He's like, oh, sorry, man. Give me five days. I'll get back to you. I was like, cool. Five days go by. Now I'm getting really anxious. I'm like, did I get it? What's going on? I don't know. And Mike's, after five days, nothing. I reach out to Mike again. I'm like, hey, Mike, sorry to bother you, man. Just been, it's been, a, been about a week now. Um, any word? He's like, oh, sorry, dude. Give me 48 hours. <laughs> now I'm freaking out. This is all I'm thinking about. All I'm thinking about is did I get this job or not? 48 hours goes by. Nothing. And I'm freaking out in Tel Aviv, all by myself. What's going on? <sighs> I go to Mike's page and I see that it's his birthday. So I can't reach out on Mike's birthday and say, hey man, like what's going on? Did I get the job? So what I did was I went to my email list. Because in my mind, I'm thinking like, they don't know yet. Like they don't know who they're gonna pick. Like they're still really deciding, like it's a whole big thing. Maybe they're going back and forth. So I go to my email list and I send out an email 
to several thousand people at the time. And I was like, I have a huge favor to ask. A really big favor to ask. If you could go to Gary Vaynerchuk's Facebook page, and I linked to his Facebook page, and tell him, make a post on his page, and tell him why you think I should be his coach, I'll be forever grateful. And I said, only do this if you actually think I'd be a good coach for him. If you don't, you can tell him that. But just tell him the truth if you actually think I'd be a good coach for him. And thousands of people went to Gary's Facebook page and wrote these long, long, long paragraphs of why they thought I would be such a great choice for him and why they thought I should be his coach. And like, I was in tears that whole night just reading all of these and just getting such a wonderful response, so generous and kind. And I spent the entire night staying up, responding to every single one, saying thank you so much, thank you so much, thank you so much. And uh, another day goes by, nothing. And now I freak out. I'm like, shit, he probably thinks I'm a cocky asshole. Why did I do that? I can't believe I sent all those people and asked them to do that. I was just like, I was all like completely lost. I thought I screwed everything up. And uh, and then finally, Mike gets back to me a couple days later and he's like, hey man, uh, are you available? And so there's a seven hour time difference between Israel and New York. Israel's seven hours ahead. So at that time, it was it was probably about 7 p.m. Israel time, about noon New York time, and, and Mike was like, hey, are you available? I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. What's going on? He was like, okay, here, let me, uh, let me just answer some emails, do some work, and I'll get back to you in a couple hours. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> so several hours go by. It's now about midnight in Israel. Like, I would have been sleeping, but I just was waiting by my phone, waiting for Mike to message me. Finally, he messaged me. It's about midnight. And... Uh, He's like, hey, are you free? I was like, yeah. So we get on the phone. So he, he FaceTimes me on, on uh, Facebook Messenger. We're doing video chat. And Mike goes, uh, listen, man, I just want to, uh, number one, say thank you for applying and thank you for coming to New York. Really appreciate it. Um, long story short, Gary and I both think you're a fantastic coach. Uh, you really are. But... Uh, you got the job. And I was like freaking, I was like, are you shitting me? I was, I couldn't believe number one, I got the job. Number two, I was like, you're an asshole, Mike, for like <laughs> building it up like this. Um, and I was crying and I was saying thank you and da, 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 all this stuff, it was a whole big thing. Um, and I remember like, I'll never forget that night, but it was it was crazy. Um, it's not, it's like coming back right now. So it's still like shocking that like, it's still weird to say I'm Gary's coach right now because it's still hard to believe. Um, but the sort of the, the wrap up of this that I think is a lot of the main message here, before I even started reading Gary's content, I was doing a lot of what Gary's thesis is, which is creating content and putting yourself out there and giving away stuff for free. And I wasn't doing it to create a business, I was doing it because I loved it. I was doing it because there was nothing I wanted to do more and there was nothing I loved doing more than putting content out there for fitness and health and nutrition and strength training. And it wasn't with the back end intent of making money, it was with fully the intent of because this brings me the most joy. And I don't say that to sound like self-righteous, not, it's not the point. The, because the reality is I think I'm very lucky in that had I known that there's a possibility of making money from doing this, I think I would have been screwed because every time I posted, every time I made a video, every time I wrote an article, I think in my head, I would have been like, why aren't I making money yet? Why isn't anyone asking for coaching? And I would have been every situation, I would have been trying to get someone to pay for something. To, to purchase something from me. And when someone asked me a question, instead of me being super excited to answer because I could help somebody, I might have been resentful thinking, how dare you think you could get this information for free? Which is where I think a lot of people are. And I think I'm very fortunate that the timeline in which it all happened, I didn't even realize a business was possible because it, I was fully able to focus on helping people. And when I was fully able to focus on helping people because I enjoyed it, I was able to put, put out more content that was higher quality and able to answer everybody's questions. And who knew that one of those people's questions that I would answer 
who would eventually become Gary Vaynerchuk's coach, who would eventually suggest that I become his coach after him. And uh, just get chills thinking about it and talking about it, but um, I wanted to make this video because I get asked this question enough about how I became Gary's coach that I thought, you know what, let's just make a video, tell you the truth, literally the entire story. Um, and if you are ever curious about what is the what is the right move? What should you do? A lot of people they end up overthinking it. Should I be on Instagram? Should I be on Facebook? Should I be on Snapchat? Should I be on Twitter? Should I be on YouTube? Should I do email lists? And like, well, what type of content? And how long should the content be? And when should I publish? And how long should it be? It's like the the really the that type of stuff is overthinking it. It's the minutia. It's the stuff that like it doesn't matter until you've really handled the big blocks and the big blocks are creating consistent content that helps people that's it the the specifics the actual platform the length of the content the all that other stuff it's it's fun to think about because it will very easily prevent you from actually doing anything when you overthink it and the first thing you just got to do is make content and a lot of it and with the intent of helping people and if you can do that consistently and keeping in mind when I say consistently I don't mean for a week or for a month or even a year I mean years I started writing at least one a week every week in 2011 I did that for at least you can go to my website sitefitness.com and see I did that at, from 2011 all the way through 2015 I'm terrible at math, so 2011, 2012, 13, 14, 15, that's five years. Literally just counting on my fingers on camera. It's a better part of five years, one article a week, every week. That's like a lot of work. It's one of the most basic things. That's like a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And for several of those years, without monetization, without really making any income from it, and I want to say that because it's just so easy to fall in the trap of this isn't working one month in, two months in, a year in, and you're just not giving yourself enough time. So if I can leave you with one tip, trick, whatever, keep going. Don't stop. And you never know what one individual you'll interact with that could change your life forever. So, love you. Thank you. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Only if you liked it. Talk to you soon. Last set, best set. Come on. Strong workout, man. Really good job. Just get out there. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do anything. And don't let anyone make you think that you're not as good as you are. Or, I don't know. It's hard to articulate it, I guess. But just get out and have an awesome time. Just do everything and everything. So that's it. I'm going to go now. I'll talk to you guys later.